Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to be exploring Armitage. Alright, so we're actually going to be performing exploits on our vulnerable operating system, which in this case is Metasploitable 2. So I hope you're really, really excited. So you might be asking yourself, what exactly is Armitage? Well, Armitage is simply the graphical user interface for Metasploit. Alright, so the way you have Nmap and Zenmap, Nmap being the command line interface, and you have your Zenmap, which is the graphical user interface, that is the same way. So you have your Metasploit console and Armitage. So Armitage is the graphical user interface for Metasploit. Alright, so some of the advantages are it gives the user much better idea of what's going on. So great ease of access and the user is able to understand uh, the, the scan process and how everything is being exploited and it just gives the, the user a graphical representation of the scan and the exploitation technique. Alright, so let's get started. Now by default, Metasploit, uh, sorry, Armitage can be found on the dock uh, on Kali Linux. So if you just go to the little uh, green haired creature icon, uh, I'm not sure if that is the, what it is, uh, but regardless of that, uh, as you can see, it is Armitage. Or if you do not have it on your dock, you can just go into applications and you can go into exploitation tools and you'll find Armitage there. All right, so just click on Armitage and now it's going to prompt you to connect to the local host in a few seconds. Just give it a few seconds to start up. And there we are. It's going to prompt you to connect to the local host and the port. Just hit connect. Do not change anything here. And once uh, you hit connect, it's going to prompt you to start the Metasploit RPC server. So just hit yes, we want to do that. And now it's going to start connecting to the remote host and just give it a, a few seconds and we should be good with Armitage. All right. So the great thing about Armitage, as I said, is that the exploitation is uh, is then uh, the exploitation process is automated as well as, as uh, you know, the uh, the setting of hosts, the setting of targets, but, you know, vulnerability analysis, uh, uh, you know, it also offers, you know, functionality like that. And we'll be looking at this when we'll be exploiting um, our our Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. All right, so as you can see, Armitage is loaded up and you might be a bit confused with the interface because you heard me tell you that it was a graphical user interface and now you're seeing a Metasploit console here. Well, don't worry about that. The Metasploit console there is, uh, is there to aid you in what's, what exactly is going on. All right, so the first thing I'm going to start with is I'm going to start with this little toolbar up here. This little toolbar is uh, very, very simply put. So in Armitage, you can uh, you can set, change settings like add a new connection. You can check the preferences. You can set the target view settings. You can set the target view, set the exploit rank. You can use a SOX proxy like we did in the proxy chains video. We can look at the listeners so you can connect to or wait for. You can set the L host, the listening host, if you want another listening host. For example, if you're running uh, Kali Linux on another computer, and you want uh, that computer to also listen to. You, you also have your scripts and you can close Armitage. In terms of the view, this is just to edit the view. When we look at hosts, you can add your host. So for example, uh, we'll add our Metasploitable 2 virtual machine here, but uh, we'll do that in a few seconds. We have Nmap scans, which is awesome. You can automate Nmap scans directly from Armitage. You then have your Metasploit scans, which is awesome. Uh, we then have your DNS enumeration which we looked at in the information gathering section, I hope you remember. So everything can come together really, really beautifully. And that is why I really enjoy using Armitage and you'll, I'm sure you'll see why. All right, you can then clear your database, which is essentially just clearing, uh, you, you know, any of the leftover scans uh, that you had performed or exploits that you had performed. You then have your attacks where you can find attacks on your target or your host uh, and you have Hail Mary, which is something we'll look at in a few minutes. Okay, looking at the workspaces, you can manage and show all your all your, the workspaces you currently have. In terms of help, you have your homepage, your tutorial scripts, and your bot section. All right, fantastic. Now let's get into the interface. So the interface is sorted into three sections. All right, you have your your first section, your second section, and your third section. All right, so you can enlarge them and resize them uh, depending on how you want them. Uh, to be displayed. So I usually like having mine uh, like this because I like having to see what the console displays. But uh, as much as I like that, I will be looking at the first section here. In the first section, uh, essentially what is being displayed here is your pre-configured modules. All right. So you can also search for modules here. Uh, you know, in this little search bar. So this is where you have all the modules sorted in terms of auxiliary exploits, payloads, and the post, which we'll look at in a few seconds. 
when it comes to the second the second interface here the second interface is used to display your active targets uh, that we were able to exploit against all right so this is where all your active targets will be displayed in forms of computers we'll look at that again when we'll get started with metasploitable 2 as for your console this is your metasploit console and uh, it'll be uh, well your activity will be sorted in forms of tabs here again you'll be you look at exactly how that happens and essentially allows you to uh, to run your metaprater or your console sessions simultaneously something really really awesome and i'm sure you'll appreciate it okay let's get started with your module section so as i said your modules essentially contain uh, your all your modules uh, in, in this section and they're sorted in terms of auxiliary exploits payloads and post and you can go through them so for example we have auxiliary you can look at the auxiliary scanners you have your scanners fuzzers uh you know your sniffers spoofers etc etc you have your exploits where your exploits are sorted in terms of their their platform that they're running on and operating system that they're running on for example you have android apple ios uh firefox free bsd uh linux uh unix uh, mac os x and windows you then have your play payloads that are also sorted in terms of their platforms and their operating systems that they're currently that they are to be exploited on all right you then have your post which is also similarly sorted in terms of their uh their, their platforms and the operating systems that they are designed to be exploited on so let me just close every one of this and uh, as i said you can also use the search uh the, the search bar here to search for the metasploit uh modules all right now let's get started with some actual uh, exploitation and we're going to start off with metasploitable too all right so what we're going to do is we're going to go into hosts all right now in hosts you can import hosts or you can add hosts we're not going to add a host yet and the reason is i'm going to use an nmap scan to also perform some information gathering while adding the host so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to go into nmap scan and i want to perform a quick scan that will detect the operating system that is running on our target or or, or our host for that matter so i'm going to click on that and now it's going to prompt you to enter your host IP address or your target IP address or the range if you want to scan your entire network. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get the IP address for Metasploitable 2, which as you can see here is 192.168.1.106. So we're just going to enter that right now. Excellent. So once we hit enter, it's going to perform the nmap scan and it's going to detect what operating system is running. Now, as I said here, the activities are going to be sorted out in terms of tabs. So your console is still open and your nmap uh, scan is still uh, ongoing here or it's, a, it's just started and you can run them both simultaneously, which is fantastic, right? So the scan is done and it should give you a prompt here saying the scan is complete. Voila. So uh, it's going to give you a, an option here saying use attacks, find attacks to suggest applicable exploits for your targets. Interesting. So I'm going to hit OK. And what do we have here? Well, we have a little cute little penguin here to represent Linux. So we know it is running uh, Linux 2.6 uh, and the kernel is not specified more than that. All right. So, you know, uh, you can see the services and the ports that are the ports and the services running on these ports uh, with the nmap scan so we were able to get information about our target and now we we understand what operating system is running on it and we can see the services running on the ports in the previous video we looked at exploiting the ftp protocol or the ftp port with the ft v, the f uh, the vs ftpd uh, backdoor and how did we do that all right, the first thing we did is we know that it exists as an exploit. So we're going to go into our modules and I'm going to show you exactly how to find it. So we're going to go into exploits and we, we are going to go into Unix because it is a Unix, uh, it is a Unix exploit. And once I click into Unix, we're going to then select the protocol, which in this case is the FTP protocol right here. And we're going to expand that and voila, you have your SVS FTPD 2.3.4 backdoor. So if you want to, uh, if you want to execute this, what we do is we just double click it. All right. And once we double click it, it's going to give you the options that we used in the previous, uh, or we used in the Metasploit console, uh, options like setting your R host and the R port. So by default, the L host, which is your listening host, which is your IP address, uh, is default is set by default. So 192.168.1.107 and the default listening port is also set, uh, by default. All you have to do is just enter your R host, which in this case is 192.168.1.106, and we will exploit the backdoor using the FTP service. So 192.168.1.106, .1 
And once you're ready, you can just hit launch, all right? And it's gonna launch the exploit. So just give it a few seconds and it's gonna open up a new tab over here, the exploit tab. Just give it a few seconds here. And there we are, found shell, command shell open, and voila, we have backdoor access. Now you might have noticed something also very, very interesting. The Linux computer here is now uh, surrounded by lightning or electricity and is turned red. Now this means that we have successfully exploited this system in one way or another. All right, so this is fantastic. Everything is automated really, really well. But now you might be asking, I want to exploit more things with Metasploitable. What can I do now? All right, tell me what I can do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close up this menu here. And what uh, the, the awesome thing, here, as I said, is the automation. Uh, but before that, I'm just going to, um, well, if I look at the shell that's running, uh, if I right click, sorry about that, if I right click on the target, we can see that it gives us options to log into the default network services. Now, that is something just, uh, you know, very, very common. Once you've cracked them, if, if the cracking process is possible, you can then log into things like the FTP protocol, the HTTP, MySQL, SSH, you get the idea. Now the shell that we created, which is what we, the, the exploit that we used, allows us to interact with it. We can then upload, we can pass the session, we can post modules and we can disconnect. So uh, let's say we wanted to interact with it. So if we wanted to interact with it, it's gonna open up a shell for us. And again, we can list the files on the server, the Metasploitable 2, uh, you know, virtual machine, which is considered to be a server because it does run some web applications. And voila, you have access to the root folder. So let's see if we change directory to the home directory and we list the files in there. We have the MSF admin. So let's also change directory into that MSF admin and we can list the files in there. We have the vulnerable. So CD vulnerable, uh, whoops, CD vulnerable, CD vulnerable. And if we list there, we have the, uh, we have the, the web services that are running. So you have MySQL, the Samba, uh, Tiki Wiki, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just gonna close the shell because we're done with that exploit. Let's look at how to exploit or how to find exploits automatically now. So I'm gonna close that shell and I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to the shell one and I'm gonna hit disconnect because we're done with that exploit, right? So once it's disconnected, it's gonna remove the little uh, icon that denoted the fact that the uh, operating system or the computer was uh, was exploited. Now, you might be asking, well, how do we, you know, how do we exploit it automatically or how do we find exploits automatically? Well, we go into uh, attacks and we find attacks. All right, so now it's gonna find attacks that you can run on the operating system or, or the computer. In this case, our, our target host, which is the Metasploitable 2 virtual machine. So as you can see, it's gonna, it's gonna query the exploits and just give it a few seconds to go through all of them. And once it's done, it's gonna give you all a, a list of the compatible exploits that you can use or exploits that can actually uh, exploit a vulnerability on your, uh, on, on your, on, on the operating system or the target that you've chosen. So if we right click now and we go into attack, you can see that it's listed all the services, uh, that we can crack. So if we go to FTP, we have the VS FTPD backdoor here. We have the pure, uh, FTP bash uh, execution here. You can also check for exploits again. You have your telnet, you have your HTTP vulnerabilities. So these are all uh, vulnerability uh, or exploits that you can run on this virtual machine. Uh, so if we go to, for example, something like the web app, we can, um, or let's, let's get something more pra practical. Sorry about that. If we go into the MySQL, so we are only have one exploit for the MySQL uh, database. So if we click on this uh, payload, if we load it and uh, let's see if everything is set correctly, the R host, the R host, there we are. That That's okay. So we're just going to launch. Or let's see if we can get any information, right? So it's going to start the exploit in a new tab. I'm just going to close the old tab. So it's going to start the exploit process. Just give it a few seconds here. And there we are. It's going through a process. Uh, for some reason, uh, the MySQL function system execution is not available. So yeah, this exploit did not work. Now this is what I was talking about. Now it is going to work.